This video is to show you how to make these cute little jelly bean flamingos. So these little flamingos are completely no sew. Even the beak is crocheted on as you go. So they don't take any time at all to work up. And for the video, I'm gonna be using Hobby's Honey Bunny yarn. I have candy floss, hint of pink, white and black. You don't need very much of any of them. And then I have a 5.0 millimeter or H hook. And I like the Clover and Moore hooks. Um, and then I've got my needle, scissors, stitch markers, and I've got some 10 millimeter safety eyes that I'm going to use. If you don't want to use safety eyes, then I do have an embroidery tutorial for the eyes that I will link below for you. And we also have our stuffing. So if you'd like to follow along with a written pattern as we go on here, we have a couple options. The first option is the free version that is up on the blog for the Jelly Bean Flamingo. The second is the paid version, which is on Ravelry or Etsy, and it's a five-in-one jelly bean bird pattern. So it includes the baby chick, mallard duck, penguin, and chicken pattern, as well as the flamingo in it. So eventually they will all be up free on the blog and have full video tutorials. So keep checking back. I will update the des description as I go for which ones have been released. And lastly, if you'd like to adjust the playback speed, there's a cog in the top right corner of your video. If you clicked that, the drop down menu will show playback speed. And so you click that and adjust your speed accordingly. So you can speed it up or slow it down depending on your preferences. And don't forget as we're going through, you can always pause the video in order to catch up or take a break. And that's about it. So let's get started. So we are going to begin with the wing today and to do that we want to leave about four inches or so here at the beginning and then we're going to make a slip knot. And then what we're going to do is we are going to chain three and then you want to place three double crochet stitches into the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three. So this third chain is also our starting chain. So that's important to note for when we crochet on the wings later. After our, those three double crochets, we're gonna chain two and slip stitch into that starting chain. So if you want to, you can also mark this starting chain because that's the chain we want to work into once we um, or crocheting the wing on. So if you're confident and know where your starting chain is, then don't worry about marking it. But otherwise, let's mark our chain. And then we can end off. So again, you wanna probably leave about four inches because once we crochet our wings on, we are also going to tie them through the fabric as well, just to give them a little bit of extra security. So there's our first wing done. So make sure you make a second one as well. I'm just gonna do it on camera with you since they're really quick to make. Again, we're gonna chain three and then we'll do three double crochets into the third chain from the hook. And then chain two and slip stitch into that same chain, our starting chain. And then make sure you're marking your starting chain if you're unsure which one it is. All right, and I'll come back and we will start the beak. Now on to the beak. So for the beak, we're gonna start with a magic ring. Now, if you find magic rings tricky, that's okay. You can do a chain two and then put all the chains for the first round into the second chain from the hook. The trick I find for magic rings is to first, once you've made it, is to make sure your yarn will move. And next is to put the first round of stitches very loosely. So for round one, we're gonna do four single crochet stitches. And again, I do them loosely to make it a little bit easier to close my ring. And then once you've got those stitches on, 
close it. Okay. And then what I forgot to do is normally I would change color on this last stitch. So let's go back into that stitch there and we'll change to white. And then for round two, we are going to, to do an increase round. So we're gonna do a single crochet in our first stitch and then two single crochets in the next stitch and repeat that one more time. So we'll go from having four stitches up to six stitches. Now this part's a little bit tricky because to do the color change, I normally slip stitch into the back loop of the next stitch. So that's what I just did there. It's really hard to see in black though. And then I am going to also single crochet in that stitch. So the slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch when you're working your next round. You just skip over it. There we go. Then we put our single crochet there. Yeah, so this stitch we won't work into when we move around to the next round. And then after we put one single crochet in this stitch, we're going to put two in the next one. And then again, one single crochet in this next stitch and two in the final stitch. So you should have six stitches when you are done this round. And now that I'm done this, I'm going to cut my black yarn and I will tie the, the black yarn tail with the white one here before I flip my beak inside out. So it can be a little tricky working with four stitches in your first round. That's okay, we'll get there. Okay, there we go. And then for round three of the beak, you're going to single crochet in each stitch. Now, what you wanna make sure you're doing is not working into that slip stitch there. And to know which one your slip stitch is, you can always count backwards here so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know that this is my slip stitch here and this is the stitch that I want to start in. I need to add a stitch marker now. Okay, and then we're doing one single crochet in each stitch around. Alright, and then you can end off by slip stitching to the next stitch. Okay, and since the beak's so small, you probably want to cut these ends a little bit more so that they can stuff into your beak better. And then what we want to do is we want to mark the last three stitches that we worked. Okay, so you can see this is where we did our last slip stitch and we're gonna mark these three stitches because that will help us once we are crocheting on the beak. And once you're more comfortable, you can probably skip that step. But for now, we'll add it in. Okay, next up, we're gonna start the body. Okay, so let's start the body. For the body, we wanna start with a magic ring. If you prefer, you can still do the chain two and place all the stitches from the second chain, or from round one into the second chain. If not, you can give this a try. If you want more details about how to do your magic ring, I do have some video tutorials for beginners, so take a, 
a look at the playlist that I have in the description below. So it has things like magic ring and invisible decrease and stuff like that. Anyways, so for round one, we're going to play six single crochet stitches into this ring. Again, I'm going to do them fairly loosely in hopes that that helps my ring close. One, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. And then I find by closing it, if you grab back here where the, the knot is, that seems to help the ring close as well. Okay, and then we're gonna place our stitch marker and move on to round two. So round two is an increase round. And for it, we are going to put two single crochets into each stitch. So we're going to go from having six stitches up to 12 stitches. So again, two single crochets in each stitch around or increase in each stitch around. And then for round three, we're again doing an increase round. This time we're going from 12 stitches up to 18 stitches. So to do that, we're going to single crochet in our next stitch and then do two single crochets in the stitch after that. And repeat that all the way around. So you'll repeat it six times in total. And again, we'll have 18 stitches when we're done. So single crochet and then two single crochets. and there's the end of round three so next up we have round four so for round four you want to get your accent yarn out so whatever yarn color you'd like to use for your feet today I'm going to use the hint of pink yarn okay so our first stitch we are going to single crochet but the last pull through, we want to switch to our leg or foot color, I guess you could call it. So the last pull through is of the new color. And then we're going to dive right into a bobble stitch. So the bobble stitch, we want to yarn over, insert our hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, through two. So we kind of started to make the beginnings of a double crochet stitch here. So we need to do that another four times and then we're going to pull across the top to finish off the stitch. So again, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, through two. Yarn over and insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, through two. It two more times. Okay, so now we've got six loops on our hook. What we want to do is yarn over, but this time we're going to yarn over with our main color again. Um, and the key to keeping the bobble stitch to you in making the bobble stitch stick out is to make sure you've tightened down the beginning and end of your bobble and you want to keep this pull through fairly tight. Okay, and then we're going to tighten that up again. And then you're going to move the stitches over and make sure you're working into the next stitch. And we're going to single crochet in that stitch. 
And again, we're trying to keep our tension fairly tight here so that our bobble sticks out nicely. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna single crochet in the next four stitches of, as well. So that's a total of five stitches in between our legs. And on the last pull through of that fifth stitch, we are going to add our new color again. So I'm just gonna cut it from the last one. I will reattach it again. And then I'll show you how to, to weave those ends after we've completed this round. So and again, we're gonna do a bobble stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a stitch, yarn over through two. And we'll do that three more times here. And again, if I'm going too fast, I do have some tutorials that specifically show you how to do a bobble stitch a lot more slowly. There we go. So now that we have those six loops on the hook, we're going to grab our main color because we're switching colors again. And we're going to yarn over and pull it through all six loops on the hook. And then you want to pull again on both ends and move over your stitches to make sure you're working in the next stitch you're going to do a single crochet and then we're going to single crochet in the rest of the stitches You want to make sure that you still have nine stitches or sorry not nine stitches make sure that you still have 18 stitches okay we'll place that in there and then we're gonna cut this yarn if you haven't already okay and then what you can do is you can tie up front tail and the back tail here to hold your bobble together. Don't pull too tight because you don't want to lose this stitch in here because you need to work it in the next round. Okay, there we go. And in a minute you'll be able to just tuck those inside once we get a couple of rounds in here. So the next round round five is a decrease round. So we're going to go from having 18 stitches down to 15 stitches. So to do that, we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches, and then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. And we'll repeat it three times total. So one, two, three, four, and then we'll do a decrease. Okay, and then repeat again. One, two, three, four. And then we'll do a decrease. And repeat one more time. So one. So there's the end of round five. So round six and seven, you will just single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm gonna do those off camera, and then when I come back, we're gonna do round eight together. So again, you're just gonna single crochet in each stitch. You're gonna do that for round six and round seven. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of round eight. Before we can start working round eight, we need to line up where our wings are going to go. So to do that, we're going to place our animal down on a flat surface, and we are going to measure out where the middle seven stitches are. 
So I found my center one here. And you don't have to mark all of them off if you don't want. I'm going to do it just for the video to help you see what I'm doing here. So we've got our middle seven stitches all marked out here. And what we want to do is we want to move around to the right of those stitches. I'm going to count one over to the right. If you're left-handed, you will do this on the left-hand side instead because you'll be coming from the other direction to work this. So this stitch over here, this is the one that we want to work our wing into. So if this is your next stitch, then great. We're going to start with the wing. If not, though, I want you to either crochet over to this stitch so that it's the next one or take a stitch out to make it the next one. Because we all crochet a little bit differently, our stitches stack differently, so that's why we're measuring out where the wings go. So for me, it happens to be the next stitch. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my first wing, and I like to have one tail on either side of my stitch marker for tying them on after. So first we're gonna crochet them in, and then we're gonna tie them on. So now we're going to place our wing in front of that stitch that we indicated. And we want to first work through the starting chain, which is the one you've marked here. And then we're going to work through the next stitch of the body the same way that we would if we just continue working on the body. So we're going to do a single crochet through both of those pieces. Okay. And then we can take out these stitch markers. Okay, so now that we have our first wing on, we need to do a single crochet decrease for our next two, for our next stitch. So decrease, and then we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. And then we'll do one more decrease. Okay. And then we are going to grab our second wing and we're going to put our starting chain in front of our next stitch. And again, I recommend putting like one tail on either side of the stitch you're going to make here through the starting chain through the next stitch of the body, single crochet those two together, okay, and then you want to single crochet in the next two stitches, and then we're going to do one more decrease, a single crochet decrease, and then single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So what we've done in round eight is we have done a decrease round and attached our wings on. So we should now have 15 stitches total. Oh. So I'm gonna leave this stitch marker in and take this one out, the one that was on the wing. You don't need that one anymore. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is those ends, I am going to pull them in on either side of the stitch that we made to crochet them together. Just adds a bit more stability to the wing, plus it means that you don't have to weave in the ends later. So you can choose to not tie this off if you don't want to, that's okay. But you wanna weave in the end somehow. on the inside and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tuck in these ends and we will start round nine so round nine is an increase round so we're gonna be starting our head 
So we're going to go from having 12 stitches up to 24 stitches. So to do that, we're going to place two single crochet stitches in each stitch. So we increase in each stitch around. on to round 10. Round 10 we are going to single crochet in each stitch around. So we will have 24 stitches still when we complete this round. Okay, so for round 11, we're going to start attaching our beak on. To do that, we want to crochet, do a single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Okay, and then we're going to grab our beak. And we want to place the stitches that we marked out right next to the head or body. And we want to go from the inside to the outside of the stitch for this to the right of the beak and then from the outside to the inside of the body. So we are crocheting just this back stitch into our next stitch on the head. Single crochet those two together, and then you can take out that first stitch marker. And you want to do the same with the next two, so from the inside to the outside, and then from the outside to the inside on the head. And we'll do that one last time. All right, and then what we're going to do to finish up round 11 is we are going to single crochet in each of the next 15 stitches. Okay, so for round 12, we're going to attach the top part of our beak on. So first, we're going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Okay. 
and then instead of working these next three stitches of the head we are going to work the three stitches of the beak so we're going to go into the next stitch of the beak again on the beak and one more single crochet on the beak and then what we're going to make sure we're doing is that we're skipping three stitches back here so one two three and then we're going to single crochet in each of the next 15 stitches around So then with this tail, if you have a hole here, you're welcome to darn up the hole and then weave your tail through. Sometimes there's a bit of a hole on this side too, depending on what type of yarn you're using and how tight your tension was when you connected them. in. Alright, and then on to round 13. So what you can also do here is because of the way we attached the beak, you can do add a little bit of stuffing if you like. Or you can wait till a little bit later to add the stuffing. It's kind of tricky because it's such a small area. And your yarn tails are also stuffing it. So if you can get a bit of stuffing in there, then great. If not, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Fit. Okay, so for round 13, we're going to go from having 24 stitches down to 21 stitches. So to do that, we're going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches and then do a single crochet decrease. We'll do a decrease and you want to repeat that pattern two more times. So three in total. So again, single crochet in each of the next six stitches. And then a decrease. So round 14 is also a decrease round. This time we're going to go from 21 stitches down to 18. So you want to single crochet in the next five stitches and then single crochet decrease. And you'll repeat that two more times for a total of three times. Single crochet in the next five stitches. Decrease. Okay, 
and then on to round 15. Round 15, we'll go from having 18 stitches down to 15 stitches. So to do that, we're gonna single crochet in the next four stitches and then do a decrease. And we'll repeat that a total of three times. Okay, so end of round 15. Before we start round 16, we are gonna add in our safety eyes. So even if you aren't using safety eyes for your animal, I would recommend using stitch markers to mark where the safety eyes are supposed to go. And then you can use that as a guide to make your embroidered eyes. So here we go. And we are going to place our safety eyes on round 12 of the body. So round 12 is the, the round that we attach the top of the beak on. We can also tell though, because we can see that round eight was the round that we attached our wings on. So then we have round nine, 10, 11, 12. So I can tell the rounds because of the indentations in the work. So again, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I want to place my safety eye about here. So don't put the back on yet. Just place your eye first. See if that's where you want to keep it. And then the instructions say to place them about five stitches apart. So we're going to count over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where we're going to place our next eye. Then you're going to check and make sure that the safety eyes are placed evenly on both sides. Then you can add your backs on. And then while we're at this round, we're also gonna start putting some stuffing into the body. So when you're stuffing, you want to make sure that you get right to the edges and make sure that if you know it's around that there's been some extra increases on. So like on the neck here, you want to make sure that you're placing more stuffing around the outside then to help with the shaping. These guys don't require too, too much stuffing because they're so little. And then I don't like to fill it too full until I get up to the top. But if you're using a smaller yarn, it'll be harder to get in once you have only six stitches left. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how much to stuff right now. You'll wanna do a little bit extra. Okay, so at the end of the next round, I'll do a bit more. So round 16 is also a decrease round. And this time we're going to go from having 15 stitches down to 12 stitches. So to do that, we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches and then do a decrease. And we'll repeat it three times. So to keep the stuffing from getting into my hook, I'm using my finger down here to kind of hold the stuffing away from my stitches. So 
around 16. Now I'd recommend adding a bit more stuffing and you want to make sure, see how my head looks flat? You want to make sure that you're adding stuffing around the edges there to puff the head up. There's lots of room in there for extra stuffing. So you can also use your crochet hook, the end of it, depending on what type of hook you're using, but you can use the end of it to poke it into all the little crevices. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that and then I'm gonna add some more stuffing after the next round. So round 17 is also a decrease round and we're gonna go from having 12 stitches down to six stitches. So that means we're gonna do a decrease for every stitch or every set of stitches around. So the trick to having this many decreases together is to make sure you keep it nice and tight and use an invisible decrease method. And then I'm going to add some more stuffing. And so you can choose to end off here and cinch the top together. Or you can choose to add the little tufts of hair at the top. All right, almost done. So let's add our little tuft of hair. So to do that, we want to slip stitch in the front loop of the next stitch. So each stitch is made up of a front loop and back loop, that little V that you see at the top of the stitches. It's kind of hard to see because I did decreases all the way through here. So I've got the front loop here and the back loop is here. So we're gonna work in just the front loops here to make our hair so that it's easier to cinch up using the back loops after. So slip stitch in that front loop and then we're gonna chain four. And then slip stitch to the front loop of the next stitch. Okay. And slip stitch in the next stitch and then chain four and slip stitch in the next two stitches and then chain four slip stitch into the last stitch then we're also going to slip stitch in our first stitch to end off. And cut your yarn to end off. Leave about four to six inches here. And then what you're going to do is grab your needle and we're just going to cinch up the center. If you miss a stitch, it's okay. You won't be able to tell. We're going to do our best to try and cinch up all six stitches that are sitting back here. And then pull 
pull on that. Make sure you've tightened it up. And then what I do is I just make a little bit of a knot here and then I pull it into the head. All right, and all that's left is to cut our little tail. And since we don't have any other embroidery or sewing that we need to do, our little guy is all finished. All right, thank you so much for watching guys. Bye for now.